Hey, happy lunch and learn. We're back as promised. And now we're going to delve into one of my favorite topics. Uh, let's talk about the naughty side of Victorians and the Victorian tattoo. So you're going to see, hopefully, if my special effects, the light, light's crazy in here. If, um, if the lights are not bothering you, um, I'll stay on here for a little bit. But if they are and if they become too much, you're going to see some graphics come through here. Um, Victorian tattoos. When we think about the Victorian era, of course we think of staunch, repressed, conservative people, not tattooed people. However, uh, it's not the case. Tattooing actually became quite the trend in the, with the Victorians, with none other than uh, Queen Victoria's eldest son, Prince Albert Edward. Oh, Prince Albert, the things I could tell you about Prince Albert. Uh, in 1862, he came back from a trip from Jerusalem. And to commemorate his trip, he got a tattoo of five crucifixes and three crowns. When he did that, um, as most Victorians did hold the royal family in high regard, they wanted to emulate everything that the royals did. And for the social elite and the aristocracy especially, we started to see a surge in tattooing. We saw very dignified women getting very dainty and discreet tattoos around their wrists. Tattoos to signify nature, femininity, flowers, um, serpents, uh, kind of let people know, I'm very, very nice, but I'm a little bit naughty. So instead of having an elastic around their wrist, they would, they would, they would have a tattoo of a serpent enclosing their wrists. And by the end of the 1800s, there were up to 100,000 tattooed people in the UK. This trend really paved the way for the inked ladies and the tattooed women of the late Victorian age and paved the way for who I am talking about today, da, 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 Maud Wagner. She should be a household name. She's a household name in this household, um, and hopefully after this she'll be a household name in yours as well. Maud Wagner, the Ink Woman. She was the first female tattoo artist in America and arguably in the world. Maud Wagner was born in Lyon County, Kansas, a very conservative place, conservative time period, conservative place. How did a nice girl like you end up being the inked woman? Well, it was easy. She started out as a contortionist and an aerialist. Um, one of the ways that women found freedom, besides, you know, the, the vast majority of, of, of great jobs that were available for women, that's I'm very sarcastic here. Um, there were not a lot of jobs for women. You could clean houses, you could be a teacher, you could be a seamstress, you could be a governess, a nanny. Um, other than that, you were you were basically going to be someone's wife or you were going to be a spinster. <gasps> Perish the thought. Unless, of course, you had a special talent or a specialized kind of thing about you, like being able to contort your body or being able to train poodles or being... Um, marred somehow in your face because then you could join the circus or the freak show. Yes, the freak show in the Victorian age. Those of you who um, saw the Tales from the Dark Side talk know that freak shows, the heyday of the freak show was during the Victorian age. These women joined the circus um, f for a chance to travel to places they could never travel and to achieve freedom that they would never have before. And Maud Wagner was one of these people. While traveling with the circus, she met Gus Wagner, who was the, he was described as the most artistically marked up man in the world. So, so at the age of 23, Maud met her soon-to-be husband, Gus Wagner, who was the most artistically marked up man in the world. She took one look at his tattoos and she thought, holy moly, this man's for me. But their, their meet cute, their meeting story is even cuter. Gus asked Maud on a date, and Maud said, no way, I'm not going on a date with you. And he said, what can I do to, to make you go on a date with me? And she said, you could teach me how to tattoo. And he said, all right, let's do that. What's really cool about this is, even with the Industrial Revolution, because around now it's, it's 1900, and the Industrial Revolution is in full force and there are mechanized tattoo machines. Well, Maud was old school um, 
through and through and she learned to hand poke tattoos. Now this was the traditional form of tattoos used by the Maori and used for millennia. Uh, she wanted nothing to do with the newfangled things. She wanted to start from the ground up and she did so. Maud ended up head to toe covered in tattoos ranging from patriotic to natural, you know, nods to the aristocracy, um, tattoos with animals, flowers, um, lions, butterflies, insects, primates. Um, she became a canvas herself. Along with Gus, um, she tattooed and brought tattoos to the masses. Once they married, they left the circus together, um, touring and just strictly tattooing, and they ended up having uh, they lost one daughter, Sarah, and they ended up having another daughter, Lavetta. Lavetta began tattooing at the age of nine. Yep, nine. So think of a, you know, beer for breakfast, a homeschooled nine-year-old tattoo artist, and that's a picture of the naughty side of Victorian life, if I've ever seen one. Um, so Lavetta learned how to tattoo at the age of nine, but promised her parents that she would never get a tattoo her salary. She tattooed until the day she died. The last tattoo gave was a hand-drawn rose to none other than Ed Hardy himself. Now, Ed Hardy, if uh, you're into tattooing, is, is um, a prolific name in the tattoo industry. And hats off to our local tattoo artists. Um, I'm a big fan, and um, at all of our tattoos, tattoo artists in our area work very hard to give us um, pieces of art that will stay with us and tell our stories uh, to the world that meet us. So um, good, good for them, and good for Maud. And thanks, thanks for being naughty with me.